Welcome to the channel. I'm Ars Poetic and I appreciate you checking my video out. At the time of posting, I'm just getting started on this channel, so if you enjoy this video at all, I would really appreciate your like and subscribe. I started off wanting to make a tech preview of Scuf's new Reflex line of controllers for PS5, but after some thought I decided to dive into a deeper discussion about pro controllers and why they can make a huge difference for gamers, but not in the way that you might be thinking about. Scuf recently announced this Reflex series of Pro Controllers for the PS5 and released their first batch of the Reflex Pro model into the wild, with the regular Reflex and the Reflex FPS set to launch in 2022. As a big fan of their PS4 Scuf Vantage controllers, I am super excited for these and I can't wait to get my hands on the Reflex Pro. Once I have one, I'll be sure to upload a full review after spending some time with it. First off, let me give you a brief history of my experience with Pro Controllers and similar accessories over the years. My curiosity began with the Power A Fusion 1 for PS3. At the time it was considered sort of a pro device, but didn't offer any extra functionality beyond just a more premium feel with improved buttons and analog sticks. While it seems they existed at the time, I didn't have anything with extra paddles or buttons on my radar just yet. As the market for these pro and custom controllers expanded throughout the PS4 generation, I dove deeper into the rabbit hole with the Collective Mind Strike Pack, the Scuff Vantage, and also the official Sony back button attachment for PS4 controllers. More recently, I installed the Extreme Rate Paddle Kits on my PS5 controllers. These are essentially the Hex Gaming Pro controllers you might have seen, but much cheaper since it's a do-it-yourself kit. You might be wondering why I went through all of those purchases and if you even really see any improvements to your gameplay with these things. The idea is that you can increase your reflex time and maintain better control of your gameplay since extra paddles and buttons give you less reasons to take your thumbs off of the sticks, which are typically reserved for movement and camera functions. This means you can better multitask allowing you to keep your targets in sight and your momentum in full swing. Now I can really dig that concept. but. My personal take on this is that if you suck with a regular controller, you'll suck with a pro controller. On the other hand, some of you might actually see performance gains if you really tap into the potential these things offer by building that muscle memory to take advantage of these extra paddles and buttons. When you get to that point where using these extra paddles becomes second nature, that's when you'll get an idea if they really make a significant difference or not for you. So for me personally, Performance gains are negligible at worst, and perhaps modest at best. But nothing is really game changing for me, specifically from a performance standpoint. So why do I keep buying these things at these absurd prices? Oh my god. And why am I still excited for the scuff reflex controllers? I'll tell you why. And this is the key point I want to get across in this video. The target audience for these accessories are gamers who want to improve their gameplay performance. What I never really see in any of the marketing or internet conversations are how these devices can actually improve your gameplay experience. The latter is what I love about these things for me, especially as a left-handed gamer. Let me paint this picture for you. I've been playing video games religiously since I was a kid in the mid to late 90s. I've practically always used regular controls, especially since there were hardly any other options back in the day. As accessibility options progressed over the years, we started seeing more options for southpaw controls in games, and yet those were left untouched by myself, and likely many others in the same boat. The PS4 allowed you to remap controls on a system level, which was a real game changer for me. Up until that point, I didn't really see the benefit of trying to learn how to game with left-handed controls since not every game offered those options, and you'd inevitably switch back and forth all the time. With the ability to remap inputs on the PS4 system level, I figured that it was time to test things out. After much thought, it only seemed natural that I'd want to use my real-life trigger finger to fire weapons and use my writing and throwing hand to control my accuracy with improved dexterity. I thought not only would it feel more natural, but I might even see performance gains as well. It was awkward at first, and I didn't really like the change. I even initially just went back to regular controls. However, I couldn't let go of how I really wanted to test out this theory. So I gave it another attempt and I stuck it out. 
Once I adapted, I much preferred this new feel and thought it also might have improved my aim. Maybe it's all placebo in the end, I couldn't really tell you since I didn't take any real metrics, but I will say it feels better to aim and shoot virtual guns with the same hand I use for real guns, if nothing else. Despite all of this, I still haven't put myself through trying to learn how to use a mouse with my left hand. I don't game much on PC outside of VR, and when I do, I prefer controller inputs when possible, so I just haven't felt the need to go that far as of yet. Here's the tricky part that I didn't really think about when going on to the Southpaw journey. Developers typically make control schemes for games with the whole controller in mind. So that means if you swap the sticks, it still just won't feel quite right when you have to use the face buttons for particular actions. Let's look at Grand Theft Auto V for instance. To roll in a particular direction, you have to press square while you hold down the desired direction. Notice how when you remap the sticks, you can sort of manage that with forward and right directions, but not with rolls to the left or backwards. You end up just rolling forward, unless you get your index finger involved, which is not the most comfortable thing. This is where you see the real benefit of those extra paddles. With extra paddles, I don't have to unnaturally contort my fingers as much, making for a much more comfortable experience while allowing me to retain my left-handed aiming preferences. As a side note, I want to point out that while it's awesome to be able to remap controls on a system level, this does not change button prompts for games. And so I really do appreciate when the developers add different control schemes or better yet, remappable inputs in their games. Though now I'm just at the point where I know that R2 in a game really means L2 for me, and so on. So it's less of a thing once you memorize the controls for a game. So let's get back to what prompted me to even come up with the idea for this video. Look at this shit right here. One thing you might not know is that you can't use a PS4 controller to play PS5 games. I'm not sure why they chose to do that since the DualSense features, though awesome, are just optional and are not required for any games that I've seen thus far. Regardless, that's reason number one I'm stoked for this controller. It retains all of the PS5 DualSense features and of course is then compatible with all PS5 games. While the scuff vantage works for most PS4 games on PS4 and PS5, one huge oversight they had was omitting the light bar, instead leaving a light up logo. This meant that the Vantage controllers were not compatible at all with PSVR games, since those games actually used the light bar on the controller for tracking purposes. Thankfully, this is not something we have to worry about since Sony scrapped the light tracking on the DualSense controllers. The paddle placement seems to be greatly improved as they are more ergonomically placed. The middle paddles on the scuff vantage were not the best. While usable, I desired some other type of arrangement there since they weren't the easiest to press. There are no sax buttons here, which is disappointing to me. They were removable on the vantage for those that didn't want to use them, and I was probably one of the few that loved to have them. At the same time, since the two middle paddles were just too awkward to press on the vantage, I often didn't use them outside of a few game exceptions, relegating most of my inputs to the sax buttons and the outer paddles. I'm thinking that the improved and more intuitively placed paddles here will sort of make up for the lack of sax buttons in my use case. I do want to take a moment to address Scuff's quality control. Before I got a scuff controller, I noticed that scuff's reputation was all over the place online. Despite this, I was willing to take the risk and try them out for myself, and I'm really glad I did. So I bought the Vantage controller when it first came out in 2018, and I was one of the many people who experienced stick drift with their controllers. They initially released a firmware update with calibration software that initially helped, but after a couple of more months I was still experiencing stick drift. I ended up shipping my controller into them and they sent me a replacement at no charge whatsoever. Overall, that process was pretty smooth and I haven't had any significant problems with the controller itself since then. This Vantage controller became the only controller I used for any PS4 or PC titles going forward. 
I did have one paddle break on me after about a year and a half, so I bought a replacement kit from them for like 12 bucks. Though if you got a 3D printer, you could actually print them yourself. Overall, I'm very satisfied with my scuff bandage purchase, and I would still be using it daily if it wasn't for the lack of support for PS4 controllers on PS5 games. So while I essentially hoped for a scuff Vantage 3, my overall experience with the Vantage controller gives me a lot of confidence in this new product. I'm thinking that the redesigned paddle placement will make up for the fact that they do not have sax buttons. Until I get myself a scuff reflex, I'll continue to use this paddle kit that I installed on my DualSense controller. It's not bad for the price and it's fairly simple to install, but I already had a paddle break on my other controller just after 3 months of use. Keep in mind that I've never broken a controller in the roughly two and a half decades I've been gaming, and I've only gotten stick drift on two or three controllers, including the initial scuff vantage that I got. So there you have it. This video isn't me trying to convince you to go out and buy one of these things, but rather I'm just taking a moment to explain why I'm super excited for this, and why they can be really dope by potentially boosting your gameplay experience especially for those of us that are left-handed gamers. So that's it for this one. Once I get my hands on one and give it a thorough test drive, I plan to make a full video review. I just wanted to make this video as sort of a primer so I could provide more context to why I think these controller innovations are so dope. If you're interested in that review, be sure to hit that subscribe button along with the bell so you know what's up when I get around to it. If you're watching this video after the fact, I'll link that review once it's out. By the way, did you know that I also stream games on occasion? If you're interested in that sort of thing, or you just want to hang out virtually while I play games I enjoy, hit me up on Twitch or my other YouTube channel, both linked in the description below. Here on this channel, I will continue to make more focused video content, from game and tech reviews and previews, to gameplay highlights, and a slew of other topics related to games and tech that I'll be having fun with, just like I did with this one. Anyways, thanks for your time. Peace.